Morning everyone. How are you today? I hope you're all well. Um, bearing up in these very strange times. Um, I know that it'll be lovely for us all to meet up together when we're finally able to, but we must remember we're all doing our bit, aren't we? Not only protecting ourselves, but we're protecting other people too. Have you ever asked yourself, who am I? I don't mean, have you ever asked who Terry Braithwaite is? Um, I mean, have you asked yourselves who you are? Uh, I know I have many times in my life and uh, in lots of ways, it, it took a long time to finally find some answer to that question. Uh, I think I know now, mostly, or I should do now, I've now reached the ripe old age of uh, 37. Um, one of the things I've been doing for the past 20 years or so is, um, it relates to that question, who am I, uh, is researching uh, my family tree and uh, Mavroin has been doing the same with hers. And we've researched back to the 1600s. Um, it's difficult to go back much further unless you were landed gentry. And unfortunately we haven't discovered uh, that yet. Um, although I'm pretty sure that I am from such stock, such is my uh, general deportment. And uh, people have often remarked <laughs> on such a likelihood Anyway, in, in relation to our family history research, Mavorin and, uh, Mavorin and I went down to Kent to see where her mum was born and lived until the 1940s. She was born and lived in Belvedere in the borough of Bexley in Kent. And we had the address where she lived, 33 Piccadilly Street. And uh, when we got to Belvedere, as we drove, I suddenly noticed the word Piccadilly. Um, we'd arrived and it was with some excitement uh, that we drove down looking for number 33 and uh, when we found it I, I was quite impressed with the house. It was a large uh, villa type property and it, it made me wonder about what Mavroin had done with all the money. Um, anyway we got out of the car and Mavroin stood outside her mum's house um, and she was saying, oh, my mum must have touched this, my mum must have walked on this pavement. I can imagine her walking down the road, going to school and so on and so forth. And suddenly the door opened of the house and um, this lady um, came out and wondered who and why her garden wall was being stroked and why we were gazing at the front of her house. And we explained, um, and, and she was really good. She, she invited us in and introduced herself as Joan. And Mavorin was thrilled to be entering the house her mother grew up in. And she, Joan showed us round each room and Mavorin was imagining her mum in each one and what she would have done and so on. Sort of taking time to, to breathe in the atmosphere. And Joan was so hospitable. Uh, she even gave us tea and homemade cake and... She was really interested in, in Mavorin's story. And she told us that the lady next door, who was 98, had lived there all her life. And although um, a little frail and hard of hearing, she had a, a good memory and uh, she would more than likely remember Mavorin's family living next door. So Joan felt it was worthwhile for us to knock the door, but um, she warned us that sometimes the old lady didn't open it. She'd talk through the letterbox. So we left Joan and went next door and knocked the door and it was quite some time before the old lady answered and she stood behind the door and asked what we wanted. And Mavoin had to kneel down to get to the letterbox and she explained what we were doing there and asked, asked the lady if she remembered the Dunn family living next door. As the lady was very hard of hearing, Mavoin had to repeat this several times in a louder and louder voice. Anyway, the old lady replied very firmly that there'd been never, ever a Dunn family living there. And she re reeled off all the names of the families that had. And well, Mavorin told her she was wrong because she knew for definite that her mum had lived there. And there followed quite an argument back and forth. Yes, they did. No, they did. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. I've got the paperwork. You can't have... And I was beginning to worry about the old lady's health, so I suggested we thanked her and left. But we were still convinced that we were in the right place and put the old lady's viewpoint down to a bad day or a lapsed memory. And we got in the car satisfied and 
decided to drive round the area before we left. As I drove to the end of the road, I saw the road sign. It definitely said Piccadilly, but it was Piccadilly Road, not Piccadilly Street. We'd been in the wrong place. And for a moment, I toyed with the idea of not saying anything and just letting Mavroin believe she'd visited her, her mum's old house. But I couldn't really do that. And uh, so I told her of my discovery. And she was deflated, but only for a moment. For at the end, we came to a T-junction at the end of the road. We saw a sign saying, Piccadilly Street. Yes. So we turned left and straight away we found number 33. It was a little terraced house and it was more in keeping with what I'd expected. Anyway, we got out of the car and went through the same routine as before and same thing happened, but this time an Asian man came out of the house and asked what we were doing and we explained. And as before, we were invited in and shown around the same routine, avoiding going in each room and obviously it had changed over the years, but the basic house was still there. And when we came downstairs, the man's wife had prepared us Indian char and samosas and we were too polite to say we were full of cake. They were lovely people. And as we were leaving, there was an old man stood in the next house's doorway. He'd seen us previously and he asked us what we were doing. And we told him about Mavoin's mum and asked, he asked what the family name was as he'd been living there since 1937 and, and he would remember them. And when we told him, he said, Nah, no one by that name's ever lived there. And Mavorin's hackles were raised. And she started to argue with him and she produced her mum's birth certificate out of her bag and showed him the address on it. And he said, Nah, this ain't Piccadilly Street. This is Station Road. But you won't find your mum's house there. In Piccadilly Street. Piccadilly Street's the one that follows on from this road. At the T-junction, it goes on. But it was all bomb flat in the war. And Mavorin said, Yes, that's right. There are no words. And I think I had the look of Oliver Hardy when Stan had messed up. But we are more than the sum of our ancestral past, aren't we? How do we define ourselves? There are two common responses. One, I am what I have. I am my education, my social status, my possessions, my health, the way I look. But if any of that is lost, then my sense of who I am comes into question. Or I can say that I am what other people say I am. What they think of me, what they respect in me. And if they say good things about me, I feel good. But if they say bad things, I can enter a dark place. And my view of who I am is threatened. One of my favourite writers on spirituality is a man called Henry Nouwen. And he answered these questions like this, and I quote, What I want to hear is that what I just said to you about our Id that identity is a lie. Jesus' whole message is saying, you are not what you have, not what people say about you even when that's important, and even though it makes you suffer, and even though it makes you happy, that is not who you are. I come, Jesus says, to reveal to you who you truly are. And who are you? You are a child of God. You are the one who I call my child. Now, child doesn't mean little child. Child means son or daughter. You are my son and you are my daughter. That's a powerful and reassuring message. And if you get a chance to read any of Henry Nouwen, I'm sure you'll, you'll really benefit from his wisdom. Well, that's another thought for the day gone. And um, it's a lovely day uh, outside. And um, 
I'm going to go outside and maybe do some, I won't say gardening, maybe lie down, <laughs> maybe sit down and, and do some reading. Um, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.